Hey, what's up? This is Jake from Nimbus DevOps, and I'm updating this repo with some more Terraform stuff for you guys. Um, I know I'm publishing this in the Kubernetes stuff, but it's because it's related. So now that the Minikube stuff is all done, what I did was um, I made a couple reusable Terraform modules. So if you go to my repo, it's just my name, Jake Furlong, and you'll or to my GitHub page, you'll see this Terraform repo. In this Terraform repo, I have a readme, which doesn't really have anything in it. Um, and then I have modules, and this is just a library of modules. And in here I have two things that I created. So one is a backend, which has a full explanation in the readme of how remote state in AWS works with Terraform. And uh, just declares a couple variables, and then runs uh, a build for an S3 bucket, encryption, versioning, and a DynamoDB table for locks. So once you have the back end done, then you can set up a network and you can clone clone this down and, and customize this yourself. And I, I put in there like what you need to do with examples and what all this stuff does. And so the network just builds out a VPC with an internet gateway, public route table, private route table, association with the VPC, uh, a route to the internet, three public subnets, three private subnets, a public subnet association with the public route table, and a private subnet association with the private route table. Um, and it explains how all this works, make sure you don't overlap your networks, and then when you bring this code down, you end up with something like this. So I have in my Terraform directory, here's my modules, and essentially what I did, just to explain this, is um, to set up a Terraform um, some Terraform resources for the cloud, we need a basic network first, and then we need to build a single cluster node um, or single node cluster uh, so we can start doing some Minikube stuff in AWS instead of on my laptop. So um, you can see here with VPC, I, I reference variables for everything. Um, and in the network file, you'll notice I declare variables but I, and I provide a description, but I don't actually provide any sort of um, default values. So if you create a, a Terraform module and then you don't provide values, what ends up happening is it's scoping, right? So it looks in the scope of the root module. It doesn't find it. It goes to the variables file. It doesn't find it. And then so what you do to make this reusable is in my Kubernetes um repo which i do have published and you can check out i have my back end which has a uh, dev prod and test and in dev i have a main file that just gives hey go grab the source for this module on github and here's my bucket name my dynamo db team in my region and then a provider and that's it so as soon as the um as soon as the resources are created i just pass these and it creates my s3 bucket my locks or my denimo db table then my back end for dev is done and i can use the same thing for prod and so for example i could take uh the back end for dev grab this file and just name these prod and then put the same exact file inside this prod directory so once you have your back end then i have a development a prod and a test uh, folder for my actual infrastructure and for dev i separate it out by network and then my node so for the network um I just have one main file, and all it does is configure a remote backend and then um, calls the network module that I created that you saw, passes the variables that you saw in my documentation, and then outputs the VPC ID for me to use later, and that'll build my network. So I'm in my network right now, and if I just go Terraform apply, uh, maybe, I was just kidding, uh, Terraform apply, this will build out my network except I have a lock uh, issue because I was using my remote backend. Let me fix this really quick. Um, and then and no, normally what you'll see is in Terraform locks, if you refresh, you'll see you have these digests. And then one of your locks won't have a digest. So all you need to do is grab this sucker and then uh, action and then delete this item. And then that will remove that. Uh, stale lock and I probably interrupted the process or something but anyway so there's my VP there's my entire network is all completely done and then if I go into let's see Kubernetes Terraform 
Uh, let's see what is in here. And then dev, and we built my network. So now let's go into the node. Yep, and then I'm in the node, and in my node directory, I have a data file to grab the uh, latest AMI ID for the latest Amazon uh, Linux 2 machine image. And then I have a file that just says, hey, use a remote backend. And then, um, and I'm using the same bucket, I'm just using different keys. And then uh, create a security group to SSH and then create an instance. And all I, and, and so for this, you're, you're gonna need a beefier instance type. So I know everybody uses T2 micro for everything. You're gonna need at least a T3 medium. So I went with T3 medium and this worked okay. But if you start doing scaling stuff, you're gonna run out of resources really fast. So um, go with T3 medium, got a key availability zone, a security group that's just referencing from up here. And then I'm just using FileBase64 for Base64 encoding of my user data script, which I keep separate because I like to have nice clean Terraform files. Um, I have it replaced on change so that if you update this, uh, Terraform will replace the instance if I update the user data. And then I just tagged it, and then I output the public IP so I can SSH. My user data script is just doing a yum update, installs Docker, sets up a user for Docker, and then I curl down the Minikube, uh, I install it, and then I start it. And then I'm curling down uh, kubectl, making it executable, put in this directory, exporting my path, making sure that it's in my profile so that I can use the commands, and then that's it. So then if I do a terraform apply inside my node uh, module, root, direct, root module, then again, this node is calling, this node is really just, um, creating this resource, these two resources. So I'm not using any um, any modules here like I am in the network where I actually use the remote one. I didn't think it was really worth creating a module for creating an EC2 instance because this has been done a thousand times. So I just made a very simple one and we can see here I have an IP address, but this takes forever. So if I log in EC2 user at this IP, I'm not using SSM or anything, I'm just doing it the old school way. Uh, downloads and then my key uh, key.pem so when I SSH to this instance this user data script isn't that long but it takes a hot minute to actually get it going and I mean it's not even set up right now for SSH traffic there we go and I'm in so it's really slow right now and if I go to root and I just do like a tail dash 50 of var log messages, we can see here that um, it's running yum um, and yum is trying to run multiple things at the same time. And so it's got a lock on the PID. And so it's basically just chugging along. And I tried to tail dash F this and it just like kicked me out of my session. We'll see if this works. Um, so we can see what it's doing. So it's, creating a whole bunch of stuff. It says that's done. Uh, tail dash F, by the way, just lets you see in real time like th what's being written from standard out into this file. So we're doing some installations, some checks. This is all cloud init stuff. Now it looks like yum is installing container D, Docker, failed default scheme. So this is where we're getting into installation failures. Some of this is because Minikube is not intended to be installed or Docker either with root. So this really should be done with like a run as type command or run user type command. Um, but it's it's good enough to get started. So I'm not gonna mess with this user data scripts. So now we're downloading more stuff. It's like cube control. And then we should be exporting some stuff and then finishing up. So, I, I don't really think this is worth it. Um, if you're if you're gonna do a completely unmanaged Kubernetes cluster and you're gonna host it on like a cluster of EC2 instances, then this might be something you want to do um, because you're gonna have to figure out how to do that without using EKS or ECS or GKE or AKS or anything like that. But I will tell you that like in my experience. Um, it's really not worth it. So what I would do instead is use a managed Kubernetes service. So we can do minikube status and you can see that it's not running because it didn't run it as uh, root. So I can just log in with EC2 user and run minikube start. And then this will go ahead and get my image. 
and then go ahead and get my cluster going and my control plane running and all that stuff. And then you're pretty much ready to go. So this is all the Terraform required. And I published these on Git and I made the repos public so that you can create the necessary backend for remote state, the network and the node. And then you can take that note, you can log in and just type minikube start and off you go. So it's all completely done for you. It's all already no, no fuss. Um, so from where do you go from here? I, I don't know that it's super important to make anything extra in this particular environment because essentially I'll be doing the same exact thing on my computer that I'm doing on the EC2, except I have to pay for EC2. So I'd rather just do it on my computer. Um, so this is probably gonna do it for Minikube for me. I've done, um, I mean, other than get like super crazy with it, uh, I've done everything I think you could do with Minikube that would be necessary because anything after this, if you're doing it in a professional environment, you're not going to be using Minikube. Um, although I have seen Minikube used in uh, places of work before, so uh, it's it's not a total waste of time to do that, especially if you need something small. Um, but if you have tiny little Minikube clusters all over the place, I mean, like, are you really using Kubernetes in, in production or are you just kind of have a bunch of one-off little Minikube clusters? So uh yeah so that's pretty much it for this you'll see it it's gonna finish up here in a second because the control plane is just starting and then from there you can basically go through the same videos that i went through before but if you want to do it on amazon linux 2 because uh why not then this is how you would do it and this is all the source code um and you can just go to my repo and you know clone your heart away so that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. But if not, then I'm probably going to move on and check out some other stuff.